Hello guys, this is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the kinematics of your radio ulnar joint. That is basically what movement occurs at your radio ulnar joint. And in the next video, we will talk about the kinetics that is basically the muscles around the radio ulnar joint and what forces they create to create movement at the joint. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of all my notes. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to cover the radio ulnar kinematics, okay? And what is the major movement that we have over here? The supination and pronation, right? So we will understand the axis, what movement happens, and also we will see what are the structures that limit this movement, okay? Which we already touched upon in the last video, so we'll just revisit some of them. Starting with your axis of motion, that is basically the axis around which the movement happens. It is a longitudinal axis, as you can see, it goes from the head of the ulna and the head of the radius, right, center of the head of the ulna and the radius. And the movement that happens is supination and pronation, where your radius will move inside your osteoligamentous structure over there approximately and distally your radius will move over the ulna right so what is the range that is available over here they say completely total 150 degrees around but then different references state different values so what we ho have over here is supination of around 85 degrees and pronation of around 75 degree what happens during supination there is some amount of ulnar varus and it moves medially and proximally whereas in pronation there is ulnar valgus and it moves distally and dorsally now what do i mean by this let's have a look so first we'll look at the pronation during pronation they say there is ulnar valgus during valgus what happens the medial angle increases right so you can see this is your humerus right and at elbow joint you can see the ulna goes in this direction so there is that valgus that is created, the medial angle increases, right? And this is supination and you can see the ulna which had gone inside has come out comparatively. So that is the varus. So that is your varus and valgus seen its supination and pronation at the ulna. And next, it moves medially and proximally. Now this is a little hard to explain, but I can almost imagine this that as my hand goes from supinated position into pronation, my ulna, which was here, it goes slightly more distally and also on the dorsal side, obviously, because this is the dorsal side. And as you move, it goes distally and on the dorsal side. Whereas with supination, it had gone distal, it comes closer to my body. So it's proximal and on the medial side. So that is the proximally and medially on supination and distally and dorsally on pronation of your radio ulna joint, the ulna's movement is like that. So now that we have covered your supination and pronation movement, another point to add to this is your ulna head, it slides in your ulna notch of your radius, right? This is your radius, right? And at the radius, there is ulna notch inside which the ulna moves and it has palmar and dorsal aspect that we saw in the last video and as it moves from pronation to supination it moves from dorsal to palmar aspect of your ulnar notch so that's how the movement happens over here distally and proximally the uh, radius spins inside the annular ligament right and also over the capitulum so that is about the kinematics now two more points to add to this is what are the structures that are limiting this movement? Starting with supination, your supination is limited by the passive tension in your palmar radio ulna ligament that we saw in the last video. If you haven't checked out, you can go check it out. I made it very simple. And also your oblique cord. Whereas your pronation is limited by your dorsal radio ulna ligament, which is on the other side of your ulna notch, right? So basically your palmar and dorsal radio ulnar ligament, they limit your supination and pronation respectively. And then there is the posterior fibers of your MCL, that is medial collateral ligament present on the medial side, which will also limit your pronation. 
Apart from this, pronation is also limited by passive tension in your biceps. And this is where the position of elbow will come into place. If your elbow is more in flexion, it won't have much effect because the biceps is relaxed. But if it's in extension, the biceps will be stretched already at your elbow joint and at the radio ulna joint with that pronation, it will create that passive tension, right? So you can say that pronation is limited by your biceps through its passive tension and also restriction that happens at pronation is the bony approximation that is the radius touching the ulna and that's where the movement is blocked. So as we mentioned over here the position of the elbow it is very important when we look at the radio ulna joint movement because if we are assessing the supination and pronation at the radio ulna joint it is best to have the elbow in flexion because when you do supination and pronation your body can compensate that rotation movement at the arm through your shoulder right so if you take my hand like this and i'm taking into pronation this is just pure pronation but i might do slight amount of shoulder internal rotation and same way with supination i might do a little bit of shoulder external rotation and that might fool you into thinking that you have a lot of supination but you might be compensating at the shoulder joint so that's why always whenever you're checking supination pronation you bend the elbow so that you are not confusing it with your shoulder movement so with so with that we finish up this topic now let's quickly summarize what did we see at radio ulna joint the axis is longitudinal and it passes through the head of radius and ulna the movement happens that is supination pronation of around 85 and 75 degrees and then we saw the structures that limit this motion right so with that we finish off this topic next video we will talk about the muscles or kinetics of the radio ulna joint so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching